You got Mario Brothers, Ringling Brothers, even two brothers. Pizza for a buck. Well, when the skies erupt and release a savage shower of sinister spheres, the fate of the entire world rests in the hands of two brave souls. The Buster Brothers. Buster Brothers is a one or two player action game first appearing in arcades. It was ported to the PC Engine in 91 and finally brought to America's Turbo Graphics two years later during the whole Super CD era. But it's not a Super CD and can be played with any of the CD-ROM system cards. At startup you have the option of selecting one or two players. Then you are taken to a map where you can choose up through the first 10 cities. It doesn't go farther than 10. You have to earn that passage yourself. Well, you know what? A real man starts from the very beginning. And ironically, so will I. The goal of Buster Brothers is simple. To pop all the spheres in each stage using your wire or various other weapons. Now, some people call them bubbles, others refer to them as balls. The manual, on the other hand, calls them spheres, so we'll stick with that. As you pop them, they split into smaller and smaller pieces until finally destroyed. Your character can move left to right, along with up and down stairs in later stages. But he cannot jump or duck, so <laughs> good luck. Along the way, the spheres drop items for you to collect. Here in the very first stage, we have double wires, which allows for two wires at once. The barrier, which shields you for a single hit. And of course, picking up food gives you extra points. Bam, stage cleared, now we're off. Fully powered up. Except not really. You see, everything resets with each stage, so you always begin without any specialties. The power wire connects to the ceiling for a set period of time. This is great for trapping spheres in small places or shielding yourself from getting hit. But don't be too quick on the trigger, because if there is nothing in sight, <laughs> you have to wait for it to disappear. Ugh. The bomb breaks up all the spheres into their smallest states, which is pretty cool. But there are times you want to avoid this because, well, look. Ah. Uh, my god, oh my god. My favorite item is the Vulcan gun that shoots rapid fire and, aside from having no effect on breakaway platforms, is pretty awesome. Also available is the hourglass, which slows the spheres down, the stopwatch that freezes enemies, and the star sword, which awards an extra life. You also have enemy characters in the stage who cause trouble. After every third stage, the plane moves to the next part of the map. Not only do the spheres become faster and larger in number, but the levels begin offering extra strategy and hazards. Some platforms can only be reached at certain heights, some platforms are invisible, and others can be slippery. No matter which stage though, if the timer runs out, or your character is hit by a sphere, it all begins again. The graphics are simple, colorful, and rather pleasing. Since you travel to different parts of the world, the backgrounds change to correspond with this and they are pretty varied. In fact, Buster Brothers overall looks pretty close to arcade accurate and for the kind of game that it is, it does okay. The music is great with recreated arcade tunes. In fact, the TurboGrafx CD variations sound better than their arcade counterparts. The sound effects are also ripped from the original with familiar pops, buzzes, and... <laughs> I don't know why. I love that one. Your character is a pretty large target, so thank goodness the controls are sharp. You can dart left, right, up, and down very quickly, which really helps to get you out of tight situations. After snagging that Vulcan gun, push up the turbo switches and just fire away. 
Now I dropped a ton of tokens into this game in the arcades, especially in two-player mode. Well, I am happy to report that the two-player mode here is just as fun as it was in the arcades. You both compete for high scores or to complete the stages, and the second player can join in any time. They even tossed in special two-player slates between stages, which is kind of a nice touch. Now, since it is one hit dead, you have to be very careful all the time. Sneaking under smaller spheres is not easy and you will often find yourself trapped. When all lives are lost, you can continue but only twice. After that, boom, the game is over. And once again, you can only start at the 10th city, so you have to earn your way to the end no matter what. Buster Brothers has some nice variety, but honestly, it could have used just a little bit more. After playing through about half of the game, the surprises begin to cease and the repetition sets in. You start to get frustrated, rushing ahead and dying, 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 dying. I don't know, I guess I just kept wishing for a little bit more gameplay, maybe a few surprises, and a slightly longer length. But when the right weapons and power-ups appear, BAM! You feel like you really own the game. And in the end, Buster Brothers can be quite a fun time. Ah, ah, ah. Except for that. Buster Brothers on the TurboGrafx CD-ROM is a faithful port of the arcade original. The one-player session is good but a bit repetitive, nicely balanced by a solid two-player co-op mode. In many ways, aside from the music, it could have easily just fit onto a regular turbo chip. I recommend Buster Brothers. It might not knock your spheres off, but it's a fun little afternoon diversion.